Hi there. Welcome to PBA, Puka Business Academy, Advanced Audit and Assurance uh, class. Uh, this being our first class, my name is uh, Kweze Kanzulu, and I'm a tutor, and I'll obviously be taking you through to the time you write your exam. We just have about a month to go, I think a month and uh, a few days. In, in as much as there's a COVID, we're still optimistic that the exams will still, uh, will still go on. Being our first video, I'll just basically give direction and uh, a few exam hints uh, to the advanced audit class, both 3.2 under CA and the advanced uh, audit and assurance under ACCA. So uh, those are my names, as I earlier said, and uh, I'm a chartered accountant, and obviously I should be able to assist uh, practically and theoretically. Okay, this is a master's level paper, so I should be of relevance. So the purpose of this video is to basically give uh, a course overview, some exam hints, give class approach and uh, set timelines for completion, completion of this course. I, I should be able to uh, distinguish and assist uh, students and whoever is watching uh, on a few glitches, uh, which I have noticed students have, especially uh, at this professional level. So what's our class approach? We have a combined class for uh, SCCA and CA. Our lecture in uh, the four major areas of the syllabus, which I'll highlight later on. And students can submit handwritten answers. I, I know some were asking as to how they'll be submitting these uh, considering the, uh, these papers are handwritten, please do not, uh, uh, do not relent. This will be done uh, just via CAM scan, and then, but I'll, I'll anyway show you how to do it in our next video. Uh, this will obviously aid uh, in easy marking and dialogue because I should be able to put up a few comments on, uh, on your paper if you submit it the way I would love you to submit it, the way I'll obviously uh, show you. Okay. So this is a syllabus for CA Zambia. It has uh, four sections, which is uh, legal, regulatory and ethical issues, acceptance and management plan, and execution of an audit and conclusion. So I'll skim through this. I'll, I'll quickly move to the next one because there's something I want to show you. Uh, this is the one under uh, ACCA, Advanced Audit. It looks a bit bulky, but uh, let's move to the next slide so you see what I mean. When we combine the two syllabi, or two syllabuses, uh, for the sake of uh, different schools of uh, thought and language, these are basically divided into four major aspects. Legal, regulatory and ethical issues, which is A and B, and uh, uh, audit, uh, advanced audit, which is uh, formerly P7 under SCCA, which basically looks at the regulatory framework, okay? This is the framework that governs uh, the accountants, the rules that govern us. We do not just do things, the rules that govern auditors. Auditors just go for work and do whatever they do. For them to be auditors, there are certain rules that they have to follow. Everybody, every one of us is learning because there are certain parameters that have been set, like you are supposed to be uh, competent, professionally competent. We are supposed to exercise a high level of confidentiality. Professional due care is very important. Uh, there are things that we talk about when we're saying do not bring the uh, profession into disrepute. I, I think I've heard a number of people busy arguing about whether CIMA is more important, ACCA or CSA. And I keep wondering if they've seen this line as to whether we're supposed to discredit anyone in the accountancy profession, which is very, very unprofessional and the person at this level, I expect maybe people who are just starting it have no idea about this to engage in such uh, immature debates. But a person who's uh, done accounting and is using the same laws that are used in the other parts of the world, I think that is very, very unfair and very, very uh, well, not, not, not correct and very, very unethical. Okay, and obviously the regulators should look into this. Then I would look, uh, at those things and the, just the way I'm coming up, that is how we apply these ethics. Okay, we are supposed to leave them and not just uh, study them. And that's the level at which this paper is at. The 
The second one is obviously looking at acceptance and management of audit and assurance assignments. The SEC one makes it above a bit more clear. It says quality control and practice management. At this level, we are away from the framework governing the accountancy profession and we are away from the rules set for each and every person. We are now looking at the audit firm as a business. How is the audit firm supposed to conduct itself in this kind of business? We'll be looking at issues to do with quality, very difficult to define, though uh, there are some standards that have obviously talked about it. Um, quality at the practice, or the, rather the firm, and quality in the field. That is why under C8 says management of an audit and assurance assignment. So, how are we going to take around uh, look at quality? How are we going to ensure that the audit firm delivers a quality job that would not jeopardize its standing? Okay, remember auditing is about confidence. Remember auditing is about the things that we do. So as we are doing those things, people should have confidence that the opinion that we are giving, which is not tangible, remember, is of uh, a good quality, okay? The work can stand for us as we, if we were to be sued uh, or we'll face any form of litigation, okay? And so practice management should sink in at this point. It's just about 15% of our syllabus, but it is a very, very important aspect because it will prevent us giving answers like resign from the engagement. Remember, an audit firm is a business. Giving immature answers, or yeah, which is ideally giving immature answers, like resigning from an engagement from the onset, is not really really fair. It just shows that we cannot deliberate and argue out a question in the exam or an issue when we are faced with it. So we cannot quickly rush to talking about resigning from an engagement when we're in business. What mechanisms, what things are we going to put up to defend our business? if we are faced with ethical issues, okay? The obviously guidelines with regards acceptance of the audit, there are obviously guidelines with uh, regards um, uh, other issues pertaining to our firm in, in case of staffing levels, who is in charge of quality control and how do we carry our, conduct ourselves uh, at the audit client's uh, premises, okay? Even who audits an audit? Who audits an, uh, an audit firm? Okay, so those are some of the issues. The third one that we would look at is planning and executing an audit. Here we're talking about an external audit, firstly, but there are also other assurance engagements like uh, uh, PFI, okay, uh, prospective financial information, and obviously due diligence and so on and so forth. But my focus here right now is on external audit. We are talking about planning. How do we plan our, our, our audits? The recommended approach is we conduct our audit via a risk-based approach, meaning we identify risks which a business and audit, a business risk and an audit risk needs to be defined. Defining it is not enough. Our answer if we've been requested to identify business risks, our explanation should depict that of a business risk. You cannot talk about uh, a business having a lot of cash transactions. If you wanted to talk about business risk, instead of talking about it in the form of uh, the business losing money, you're explaining it in how the financial statements are affected. That then moves away from the business aspect to an audit uh, risk aspect. Remember, a business risk addresses the business objective, while the audit risk addresses the audit objective. The business aspect is obviously based on the profit and issues to do with what shareholders are concerned about, but mainly the profit. An audit risk is basically concerned with the risk that uh, attaches to our work. Okay, that's why there's detection risk, there's control risk, there's inherent risk, all those things attached to our audit, uh, our audit opinion. So how are these things going to affect our audit opinion? So you cannot give an explanation that is different from the risk you are requested. Remember, a risk can be both audit and business. 
The only difference is how we explain it, how we link it to the final objective. Right, so this is a very, very cardinal aspect. And as we are looking at this topic, which is actually 40% of our exam, 40% of the syllabus in terms of weight, we also have to now look at audit evidence. We can plan, yes, identify risks, yes, as we're doing our KYC as well, but then we need evidence to support our opinion. How are we getting that evidence? Obviously, we did this in F8 or L8, um, or if you are looking at uh, the two point, uh, the, all right, I think I need to recall uh, the old habits, so I'll stick to L8, pardon me for that. So, uh, as you look at the, uh, after you looked at the risks, we're then going to look at what supports our opinion? Because we have to make an opinion. We can't just be going around looking at risks and planning. We're planning so that we can efficiently give an opinion that is materially correct. Okay, which is materially correct. We are not giving a hundred percent guarantee, but we are obviously giving it in material uh, aspects. So, what evidence is going to support us? As we are looking at this evidence. Yes, at this level, we're not talking about going to inspect an asset. When we've moved away from basically talking about inspecting an asset, okay, like we were doing uh, in our previous papers, we, at this level, we are given accounting standards and we have to audit the application of a standard. Yes, we can be told about how it was treated and then we'll be asked, what audit procedures can you do? with regards to the standard. At that point, we should now apply ourselves from what we learned in our application level or our skills level, sorry, as from what we picked out from there. The first question is, what is this? Is it an account balance or it's a transaction? If it's a transaction or an account balance, certain things do not apply, certain assertions do not apply. What are you trying to find out? Is it authorization? Is it rights and obligations? Is it uh, valuation? Is it accuracy? If those are the things you want to find out, how, what kind of evidence are you going to, are you supposed to get? In terms of valuation, what do you need to get? That is the evidence. How you need to get it is the procedure. You need to be very, very competent with that at this level, even if you have not very competent about it, we will still go around it, but please take time to study. My role at this point will be to highlight a few examples around them, I'll give a few standards. And so when the standard is given, how to audit it matters just as much as the standard itself. So you have to explain the standard in most instances and also advise on how you are going to audit it. Explaining it is probably uh, a reporting issue, but auditing the standards that have been given and how you audit these individual standards. I'm sure our books are bulky and that is a very, a very bulky aspect of our books. All right, then lastly, we'll talk about audit conclusion and audit conclusion and reporting is a very, very easy aspect. It's more like ethical issues, but you need to just apply yourselves to it. This one, I will come and look at it as well. Current issues and developments, I will not touch that. So uh, at least, I have alighted, so I only touch these four aspects and please take note, I will not touch current issues and developments. So you can study those. Um, I know there are quality issues, that's where the standards around quality are as well. So you can just look at it and see how best you can, you can build up from there. See, see how best you can build up from there, right? Then how is our online class approach? I'll do an introductory video every time for those who are, uh, uh, who are part of our online class. And then I'll give you summarized notes only for those who are part of our online class. And those summarized notes are not comprehensive. Okay, they're just there to give, to guide, so that you can at least assist yourself, uh, even as you are studying on some areas that you can really place much emphasis, but study everything. Please study everything. Yes, you can emphasize on certain areas, but study everything. Then you've got enough time to study everything. You're just home most of the time. Okay, you're complaining about not going to church and not going for work. Now you can study 
So study, do not talk about whether the exam will be what. If it's coming in September, well and good, you'd have done uh, studying by May, okay? Then I'll give a 30 minute uh, detailed video, mainly on exam techniques and just uh, seeing how you can get that knowledge and apply it in your exam. And I'll give a quiz. One will be multiple choice, just to see how much you've grasped, how much you've uh, taken up, okay? And then um, uh, at the end of the week, I'll have to give uh, an assessment specific to the lesson. So there are only four assessments I'll give and because we only have four areas we're looking at. So there are only four assessments I'll give for four areas. Okay, then uh, we'll have a Zoom session. Only if there are any questions, then we can have a Zoom session, but most of them will be like this. And we'll be meeting on the chat, on, the chat uh, on our website to those who are students then Timeline of, for completion, we should be done with this by the 24th of May. We'll have one full assessment, that is four small assessments by topic, and then one full one halfway before we reach the 24th, and we'll have a mock exam by the 24th so that our people can see if they are they're there. Okay, this will be prepared by different people uh, just to give it a few of the exam people who obviously have uh, expertise in terms of exam preparations from different places and uh, different institutions so this is how our, our website looks uh, you can uh, you'll find the mind maps there these are very very helpful you should be clicking on the assessments as long as you've not ticked on the other side ensure you click and see if it's nice if uh, it's still on announcements uh, you can check if there's anything I want to post there, and then on each and every topic, I should be put, put posting some things. I have some summarized notes there, but I'll give you uh, more uh, notes. These uh, uh, just there for you to start with. Okay, so thank you, uh, thank you to everyone, and all the best in your preparations. You can catch us there. Send your send an email address to pbaonline at gmail.com uh, if you want to be added uh, to acquire free. Uh, lessons during this COVID period. After that, we are no longer offering free services. Please take note, this is just during this COVID period. Okay, so from now to the time that COVID uh, will end, this will be free. After that, access to our site will be limited. The videos will always be on YouTube, but uh, access to the quiz, the assessments, the mock exam will be limited to those who would have subscribed and who are part of our institution. Thank you very much. And remember, wash your hands, stay home if you don't have anything to do in town. Stay home. You can't risk your health. Stay home, wash your hands. I prefer washing hands to hand sanitizer. So if you can find water, wash your hands with soap and Ensure you're moving with a, with a face mask uh, all the time, as long as you're in town, okay? And uh, avoid gatherings, okay? Avoid like, gatherings. We can use Zoom, we can use phone calls, and uh, we can use other means. It's just for a while. Let's just work around it. We've done so well at, up to now. We can still beat it, all right? And then lastly, which should be the first thing? Pray. For a Christian nation, pray. God still answers and God will always answer and he's given us life today. Thank you very much. Have a great evening and yeah, enjoy yourself.